Welcome to the Higher Ed Jobs Podcast, Ask the Expert Edition. I'm Andy Hebel, the Chief Operating Officer and one of the co-founders of Higher Ed Jobs. And I'm Kelly Sherwin, the Director of Editorial Strategy. Today we're here with expert Matt Trainum, who is the Vice President, Networks and Strategic Partnerships at the Council of Independent Colleges. Welcome, Matt. Kelly, Andy, I couldn't imagine a better place to be. Thanks again for having me. Nice to see you again, Matt. So today we're going to tackle what questions are critical to see if the employer and the department are well fit to the applicant's expectation. I love this question. I actually find it to have a challenge because what you want to do in a question around this is you want to create space for people to share with you the weaker parts of their operation or the parts that they might feel are more vulnerable or that might and sharing them the parts that make them feel vulnerable. So if I were to ask that of y'all, you know, tell me about the areas of improvement for you, right? I mean, that's sort of what you're looking for. Tell me about the areas that have rougher edges. Tell me about the areas that are harder for people there. Those are harder things simply to ask about. And so we have to find a nuanced way to say, hey, tell me about the areas in the operation that have rougher edges, that it's harder for people to interact around. These are just harder spaces. So you hear me trying to frame the question, uh, frame the area of question, and why it's so hard. I have found that there are a couple of questions that can help dig towards some of this area, and I'm super excited to hear what you all say. So a few questions that I sometimes like, a magic wand kind of question. I'm sure you both have heard these kind of questions. If you had a magic wand, what would you change about blank here? If you had a magic wand, what would you change about the culture here? If you had a magic wand, what would you change about how the team works here? If you change that blank part, you can get more and more directed on what the answer is going to be. If you had an extra X amount of dollars, what would you spend it on right within our area? You can kind of see where their weaknesses are, where they're they're worried and where they would invest So I think that can help get to it. It's not as direct. You're going to get some things that are just like, I'd like some new computer programming, but it'll help you understand a little bit of that. If you were the boss, what's a policy that you would change tomorrow? And you can add some modifiers to that. If you were a boss, what policy would you change tomorrow that affects how people work? Right? So you can kind of add some modifiers to get into some of the specific areas. I think there's questions like that that help you tune into the experience of the people I'll offer one more, and then I'm super excited to hear what you all are thinking as well. I like to have people tell me what they would not like about the job that I'm applying to sometimes. So something like for you personally, what parts of this job would you find least exciting and what parts would you find most exciting? That is a little less about culture fit and more me making sure I understand what this role really is. Someone might tell you a part that they don't like, and you might love that, so that's great. They might tell you a part that they're very excited about about the job, and you're going to realize, oh, that's not something I actually want to do. So that's a lot to say. I think fit comes in two ways. One is with you in the job, and am I really a good fit for this particular job? Do I understand what it really is? My guess is that most of the time when people say yes to a job, they understand maybe 70% of what the job is. I think, frighteningly, it's often less than that. I want you to get that number as high as possible so that your expectation of the job matches it up. So I want fit with job. And secondly, I want fit, you know, again, it's a very tricky word, but I want to know that I'm going to come into a team and a culture that is going to support me, going to enhance me, going to have me be able to perform the best that I can possibly perform. And so finding some questions in that space are good too. I love everything you said there, Matt. And I want to back up and give a little kudos to the person that sent this question in because This job seeker is identifying that the job search, the the interviewing process is a two-way street. It's not just about the employer asking questions to the job seeker, but I like that this candidate is really trying to interview the employer as well. And I also love the fact that you're suggesting how we phrase questions can make a huge difference. If we were to ask someone, what are the problems in this department? The person's probably going to get a little defensive and they're not going to be honest saying, oh my gosh, we have major budget issues. We have major culture issues. But dancing around it in very strategic ways like you did, I think that really is going to get to the core of what you're looking for to see if you are that fit for that department, that role. And you know, asking those type of questions to, like you're saying, get more than 70%. Like You can see what the duties are or what the roles or expectations are from the job description, but you want more than that. You don't want just to assume. You want to 
get a deep, deep dive into what that person you're speaking with, what they think your role and how the department is working and how you could fit into it. So thank you for everything that you commented on there. Well, I, I don't want to necessarily completely echo exactly what you both said, but I agree with both of your takes on this 100%. And also, I, I like the question a lot, and it really kind of inspires me that we probably need a full episode, not just a mailbag episode, just talking about the question part of an interview and really taking a step back and understanding this section of an interview. It seems really innocuous. Do you have any questions? No. I know how to do whatever, so I don't have questions. It's almost like you're checking into a hotel and do you have any questions about your stay, (laughs) Kelly? Do you have any questions about your stay, Matt? No, 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 I'm all set. Really, the question section of the interview, and I think that this is why this question from the listener is so good, is the section that gives you the most information about fit because it involves real communication. And remember, communication isn't just words, but it's also the tone and inflection, and the nonverbal communication you're getting back. How are people engaging in these questions? So one of the things I like doing in the first part of the question section, and I do think the sequencing of questions are important, is to start first with some knowledge-based questions that A, give you more knowledge about their knowledge and what they're doing about their profession. Are these people who do things at the serious level that you do things? And that also gives you a chance as a candidate to show by your level and detail of question, your comfort with the core parts of what your position are. I love that section and how they engage with you with that to me is the judgment of fit. And you can choose whatever you want in any job in higher education, and you can have that sort of conversation. Once you've been done with those conversations, Matt, your questions, I think are exactly where you're going. You're talking more about the culture of the department and the institution and whether or not it's a fit. I think taken as a whole, you have a whole new set of pieces of information to judge fit. And you have also advanced your candidacy in a way that shows you fit within that. And we've talked about this before, that as opposed to a group of them and you, there's suddenly now an us in the room. We're all part of the same team and we all care passionately about doing this job that we share in this this profession that we share in a high quality way. Hopefully after a set of questions, that's where you've landed your candidacy with the institution. Boom to the idea of there's suddenly an us in the room. Boy, that's the, that is the goal. Uh, just this week, I talked with a colleague who was interviewing in a room and In the interviews, one of the folks in the round robin conversation shared something personal and my friend who was interviewing responded in a really affirming way for that personal story. And it brought about emotion in the space, which suddenly created the space of us. Everybody was suddenly together in that conversation. And it was clear that that candidate was going to probably get an offer or it certainly was going to have had a great experience. So I I love that. 100% yes to having a long conversation on questions. I would love to be a part of that long conversation on questions. Perhaps I can ask a question. May I be a part of a long conversation (laughs) on questions? I think it's a fantastic thing. Always ask a question, by the way. Always ask them. Have at least two or three, but always have one. Ask questions that make them think because I, I hate questions that don't make me think. I hate questions that you can find out about elsewhere. And I hate questions that are about you, the candidate. So don't ask me what your professional development is going to be if you come to work there. You can ask me that later in the process. Ask me something that makes me think you care about me and my goals. I will say one other question because I think it really fits the specific way this person's question was worded. They said, what questions are critical to see if the employer and the department are well fit? Their questions are critical. So what have they asked you in the interview process? I would say about 60, 70% of questions are really good tells on what's important to them. You might find it surprising, but you can go through a whole interview process without having someone ask you, how do you deal with critical feedback? That might be because they don't give critical feedback there, right? That's not an area of concern for you. How do you deal with colleagues who don't know how to respond well to you? If they're asking questions like that, they're reflecting their worries. That's not always the case, but it is often the case. I interviewed at a large institution a couple decades ago. They asked me tons of questions about crisis management. My next position I interviewed at was at a small institution that had never really had a big crisis. They asked me a lot of questions about 
student development and close connections with students. Those questions revealed to me where my time was going to be spent on that job. So as you're thinking about fit, really listen to their questions. The better I've gotten, the more I actually write down their questions, not so that I can remember my answers, but so I can remember what was important to them. I love that. Great advice. I think that's spot on. Matt, anything else before we wrap it? Later in the process, it might be fun to ask a question. This is just a final question to throw out. What will surprise me when I get here? It's an invitation for them to share something that they might not think is clear for you yet. What will surprise me when I get here? So uh, that's the last one. And uh, always a pleasure to be with you all. Thanks, Matt. And thank you for listening. And we want to hear from you. What are some of the best questions you feel that you've asked that have furthered your knowledge on whether or not the position you're applying for is a good fit? What are some of the best questions that you've been asked that demonstrate to you that the position you're interviewing for is a good fit? Please email us at podcast at higheredjobs.com or tweet us at higheredjobs and let us know what you think. Thanks again for listening to the Higher Ed Jobs podcast. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>